Welcome to the 25th episode of Boat Test Reports. Today's program features an in-depth buyer's guide to express cruisers that you won't want to miss. This week's episode is brought to you by Formula Boats, a builder of 12 different models of express cruisers from 31 feet to 45 feet. Now, for the latest boating news. Seato, one of the nation's two recreational towing and salvage companies, reports a record number, 60,000 service calls for this summer. Another testament to the massive amount of boat usage in the COVID age. The top five services that Seato provided this summer were towing, ungroundings, jump starts, fuel delivery, and dock-to-dock -dock tows. Riviera Yachts has surpassed a major milestone, launching its 100th 6,000 sport yacht for a Sydney, Australia owner who bought a platinum edition. And this news comes as no surprise to me. The owner operator of this 60 foot yacht who is on his seventh Riviera says he plans on using the boat for both day boating around home and long distance cruising up to wit Sundays in the winter. Inkley Yachts has added a new outboard powered boat to its line that's expected to make her debut next year. The Hinkley 35 was designed by Michael Peters and has a length overall of 38 feet 8 inches with an 11 foot beam. She'll be powered by twin 300 horsepower Mercury outboards. Dometic Marine recently introduced its new electric power assist power steering system designed to fit a range of boats from pontoons to runabouts to center consoles. The system was created to be a more affordable option for lower priced, smaller boats. It's targeted for single outboard applications from 90 to 200 horsepower and is compatible with all major outboard brands. Retail price is expected to be $1,600 and electric power assist will be available for next season. This episode's sponsor is Formula Boats, a family-owned business which is one of the world's leaders in building express cruisers, so let's find out more. With over 60 years of ongoing advancement in marine manufacturing, Formula's tradition of excellence continues to surpass expectations with the ultimate goal of providing consistently gratifying experiences on the water with friends and family. Your choices say a lot about you. The smart choice is to break away to Formula for the boating experience you deserve. The decision is made easy. Choose popular day boats in the Sunsport, Bowrider, Supersport, and crossover lineups. Or for overnight luxury and confidence offshore, the Formula Performance Cruisers and Elite 45 Yacht. And at the heart of Formula's legendary performance, the exhilarating 382 Fastac. Look at the Formula difference the sleek design, the solid dependability, the smooth, fast ride, and most important of all, the boating satisfaction with family and friends that you experience over and over again. And now, Formula's leading position in design appeal is confirmed in fresh new updates combined with a unique flexibility program, Formula Flex, for individual personalization in exterior, cockpit, and cabin offerings. Boating in a formula truly does make all the difference in the world. Now let's take a look at Boat Test Buyer's Guide to Express Cruisers. Express Cruisers are the most popular large boat because they're so versatile for day boating, entertaining, or weekending. But picking the right Express Cruiser on your first try, it's not always easy. And it's not unusual for people to make a mistake only to later buy another boat that's more in line with what they need. You have to zero in on the configuration, size, layout, propulsion system, and lots of other considerations before you buy. Hopefully, this will help you make the right boat buying decision first. Express cruisers come in three basic configurations. Open, which means the helm and cockpit are open to the sky and there's no permanent roof. A Coupe Express, which has a roof, windshield, side windows, but is open to the air in the back, and the Coupe, which has a fully enclosed cabin on the main deck. All three are made for different purposes, so the first thing a buyer must do is figure out what the mission of the boat is to be. If the boat's mission is going to be a day boat for sunning, picnics, beaching, entertaining, and an occasional overnight or weekend excursion, then an open Express might fit the bill. These are the sportiest of the three designs and are popular on lakes or big rivers as well as salt water. 
For people who want to do a little more adventurous boating, a Coupe Express might be the best choice. The permanent roof and side windows will provide protection from the morning chill or rain and, of course, the sun. Because there's no rear bulkhead, occupants can feel and smell the fresh air and have the feeling of being outside without suffering the elements and have one continuous entertaining area that's not divided by a bulkhead. These are used for day boating, weekending, and longer cruises in good weather. A fully enclosed cabin express cruiser is usually designed for all of the above, plus extended cruising with the whole family or friends. The boat's outside entertaining areas are limited to the cockpit and the foredeck. Inside, there's usually a dinette, maybe a galley, as well as the helm. These boats are usually outfitted to do coastal and nearshore island cruising for many days at a time. Once you've decided on which type of express cruiser fits your needs, the next thing is to decide how many people you will be entertaining or cruising with. If there are just six or so people, then the smaller boats in all types should work well. But if your plans are more ambitious, then a larger boat may be in order. These days, builders are offering express cruisers from about 28 feet all the way to 75 feet in the enclosed cabin models. The next thing to consider is how you will board the boat from the type of dock where it will be kept. Generally, many boat builders have not given a lot of thought to this important detail. Is there a side door that opens to the gunnel, or will you be entering from the swim platform from a floating dock? If you're coming aboard over the gunnel from a fixed pier, is there a step to aid in boarding? You'll spend most of your time at the helm, so the most important thing about it is to have a companion seat. That may mean separate seats, port and starboard, or together at the helm station. Beware of seats that are said to be double wide. They may not be wide enough for two. We recommend double wide seats that are at least 44 inches across. Most helm seats slide fore and aft, but can the seat also be adjusted vertically? Does the seat have a bolster for leaning? When sitting upon the bolster in the up position for added height, is it comfortable? Are there footrests for the operator and are they in the right position for you? Is there a handhold on the dash for the companion? Does it have a flip seat back or can it swivel to join the gathering behind? Stand at the helm. Is the overhead high enough to let you actually stand? If standing with the sunroof open, are you looking directly at the header? Can you see over the dash and the screens? If not, is there a platform that provides extra height? Are there thick, wide mullions that obscure view? Remember, you must give way to boats crossing your bow from starboard, so how well can you see in that direction? Visibility for backing is an important consideration. Open boats and coupes generally have clear vision from the helm aft, but it may be problematic on boats with a fully enclosed cabin. Is there a side window that you can poke your head out of? Is the joystick or bow thruster toggle within easy reach when facing the stern? Some fully enclosed express cruisers have a sliding side door outboard of the helm. This is a welcome design feature because it aids single-handed operation of the boat and the operator needs only to step outside to tie up a cleat. Also, if backing into a slip, is the joystick within easy reach from the side deck through the door? Most helm dash panels are well laid out. Make sure that the engine controls fall easily to hand. All cruisers should have a GPS chart plotter and larger boats, particularly in the north, will want a radar and keen anglers will want a sophisticated sonar, so it's convenient to have room for two large screens. Is there a tray or a cup holder for your smartphone and a USB plug nearby to charge it? Is the VHF handy with a screen that's easy to read, or will you have to bend over to see it? Or worse, is it located around the corner and completely out of the way? From an operation standpoint, an important aspect of the boat is how to get forward. Are the side decks wide enough? Are there handholds on the side of the coach roof? Or on smaller open express cruisers, do you climb up and go through the windshield? If so, make sure there are high handrails for getting back down into the cockpit. The bow should also be surrounded by rails at least 24 inches high. Let's look at the entertaining venues, starting with the cockpit. Seating is the name of the game here, and the more the better. Is there a wet bar and refrigeration or cooler handy? Is there a provision for a table for alfresco dining? Can an awning be used to provide shade? And that's also true for sunbathing or shade-style seating on the bow. Depending on how you want to use your boat, an outside grill may be a welcome addition. Is it in the cockpit or tucked into the transom and reached from the swim platform? This design has become increasingly popular over the last 10 years and it's a good utilization of space, but it can only be used when not underway. On most express cruisers, seating inside is usually around a dinette table, typically on a raised platform in order to provide headroom over the berth below. This generally limits seating to four people. 
Almost all dinettes break down to form an extra berth when having a large family aboard. Before buying an express cruiser of any design, make sure the galley is where you want it. There are four main variations on galleys in express cruisers, usually depending on the size of the boat. On smaller boats, the galley tends to be below and minimal. Coupes might have the galley below or in the cabin, but enclosed express cruisers usually have the galley up. In larger express boats, it might be forward or aft between the cockpit outside and the settee inside. Most builders do not give buyers a choice of appliances, but if they do, we recommend that you pick a popular American brand name if you live in the United States. Otherwise, pick a brand popular in the country where the boat is being used. Premium upmarket brands may have status appeal, but that snob appeal will dry up quickly when you have to wait weeks for parts and service. That's why you'll see premium boats with everyday appliance brands. On open boats, the below deck space can be configured with U-shaped dinette seating forward. This is a functional design because on rainy days or cool evenings, it's a cozy place to enjoy the boat and each other's company. When it's time for lights out, it will make into a double bed, but some are more trouble to convert than others, so check this out. Generally, in small express cruisers, the second sleeping cabin is under the bridge deck. This usually consists of just a mattress on a fiberglass deck with as little as 24 inches of overhead clearance. Determine if kids or adults are going to be sleeping there, and if adults, crawl in yourself and make sure there's enough room for you. As the boats get bigger, that mid-cabin will become larger and more comfortable. In the 40-foot range, they may have their own door and possibly a separate head, which is a prized amenity. In the largest express cruisers, there might even be three private staterooms below and two heads. These are designed for large families, extended families, or two-couple cruising. On the larger boats, the master is often in the forward cabin with an island berth that may be called a queen berth. Rarely are they the 60 inches wide required for a household queen bed. Typically, they're more like a full-size bed, which is 53 inches wide and wider in the midsection than at the foot of the head. In either case, the mattress will be a custom design just for this boat, so forget about getting a more comfortable one later. Remember, all boats are a compromise no matter how big. A few builders offer island beds that can be split into two and moved outboard to create twins. This arrangement offers the maximum amount of utility and a good night's sleep. Likewise, bed sizes in guest cabins are also boat size, not household size. A normal twin bed is 38 inches wide, but on a boat, be happy with 28 inches. But be aware that many boats have twin beds which are as narrow as 22 inches or even less. These narrow sizes are just fine for children, so buyers must figure out who is going to sleep where. Finally, let's look at the head. First, does it have a full standing headroom? Second, is it a wet head or does it have a separate shower stall? Does the electric flush toilet use fresh water or seawater? Many builders have switched to fresh water to keep odors down. Is there a mirror at the right height? Is there an opening port? And does the head have an exhaust fan? About half the boats we test do not, which is inexplicable. That's part one of the Boat Test Buyer's Guide to Express Cruisers. To see part two and find out the rest of the considerations, tune in to our next episode. So that's our show for this week. Thanks for watching. Until next week, I'm Captain Steve, and I'll see you on the water.